In this episode of Another Zelda Podcast, David conducts a lighthearted quiz with some of the extended AZP crew. Hello and welcome to another Zelda podcast. I am David Geisler, your host for tonight. Um, This is going to be a very interesting episode tonight. It is only myself right now, even though you're actually going to probably hear more voices on this show than you've ever heard in any episode yet. I think we were up to four voices on our Water Temples live episode. But tonight, obviously, we are still in a situation where... uh, um, people are staying at home, and there's a bit of social distancing still happening in our current our current uh, climate, our current condition. And so um, seeing that it was becoming increasingly difficult to record with people, the uh, AZP blog crew and I decided that what we would do tonight is build a quiz. Now, I've taken about 13 questions here, 14 questions or so, um, that I've kind of pulled from other episodes, or not episodes, other uh, websites on the internet. And, um, you know, I got to be honest, this is strange. It's strange not being able to bounce off someone else and say, hi, how was your day? And then get into it and talk a little bit about Zelda. I feel so alone. All I have is my cat Schrodinger here sitting next to me. And um, that's that. So let's see here. Uh, we So I built a little Zelda quiz based off of based off of quizzes that I found elsewhere on the internet. So I didn't actually come up with any of these questions. I rearranged some of the answers, but these were all quizzes that I found other places on the internet. And really all you have to do is search Zelda quiz and you'll find a bunch of great questions. So I made a little Google form, sent it off to um, Celeste, Shane, Dan, and also kind of newcomers, newcomer bloggers, Mallory and her husband, Ryan. And they actually answered these questions together. So we have four teams tonight, Mallory and Ryan, or Coons, K-U-H-N, the Coons, Dan, who many of you know from uh, our first episode of season three here. Uh, Celeste is our editor for the blogs, and she's also written many uh, blog posts and has been in our, she was in our, she was a guest on our live Water Dungeon episode. And then, of course, Shane, who I just most recently, actually most recently saw out of anybody, uh, was Shane up in Manitowoc. Uh, my girlfriend and I, Gingsy, went to visit him, and we recorded the episode about the top 10 um, non-canonical appearances by Link. So we're going to get into this quiz in just a minute. I think the way I'm going to do this tonight is I have the quiz up in front of me. I'll kind of read through what the question is. It's all multiple choice. I decided originally it was not going to be multiple choice, uh, but I thought, well, we'll if we do that, I think it'll, it'll be a little easier to have the team members... Um, you know, kind of read the questions out and and kind of think through it. It might be interesting to hear them do that. Before that, though, I do have a little bit of listener feedback. I think about about five entries here that I'd like to read really quick. Um, let's see. Very cool. Oh, Adam Love over on uh, our Patreon page said, Hey, guys, with Breath of the Wild 2 coming in the near future, I think it would be fun to put together a wish list for the upcoming game. I can't help but fantasize about certain mechanics, items, bosses, dungeons, and enemies I would like to see in the sequel. If you could build the perfect Zelda game, what elements would you include and what elements would you live without? As always, keep up the great content. We have we have a couple bonus episodes out there where Kat, Kate and I, Kat, Kate and I, kind of surmised what could happen in a Zelda sequel. We talked a little bit about things we would like and not like based off what we saw in the the very brief teaser trailer that came out about a half a year ago. Um, But I like this question. I know for me, for myself, I would like it to still be open world. I do think that at this point, the Zelda players are... Um, I think, you know, they've gotten used to the open world concept enough that we could probably afford to have some actual classic dungeons again. I don't know if we would need the shrines to take the place of the dungeons and be scattershot all over the place. I totally understand that in Breath of the Wild they did that so that you would have reasons to go all over the land. But I think a couple um, full-on, you know, maybe instead of the beasts, a couple full-on dungeons would be very cool. If uh, anybody has any thoughts about that, they can tweet us at another Zelda pod and tell us your thoughts about Breath of the Wild 2. And of course, Adam, you can check that out as well. We have a few, Adam is one of our, he's actually one of our magical sword tier people, which is, we have three tiers on our Patreon page. 
the sword, the white sword, and the magical sword. They're based off the original Zelda game. And the top tier, which Adam is a part of, actually gets to get, um, they, we give them video uncut versions of our episodes. And so I'm waving at him right now. He's watching on the video version. And if you're inclined to check out our Patreon stuff, you can go to anotherzeldapodcast.com slash Patreon um, or Patreon slash another Zelda, patreon.com slash another Zelda podcast. Either work out just fine. Crystal Teeger over on Facebook said, hello. I know this isn't what you typically typically get responses on, but I want to say how much I love your show. I've been playing Zelda since I was five years old with my mom, in parentheses, and it is still one of my favorite series. I found your show one day on YouTube, and I have been listening ever since. It gives my ch- me childhood nostalgia, and it makes me happy to hear people casually discussing the game. I listen to your show frequently, and I just love it. Keep up the awesome work. Can't wait for new episodes. Capital X O X. Oh, Crystal Teeger, thank you so much. Uh, thank you for leaving us a comment on Facebook. And then I have just a couple iTunes reviews that I must I must share because it's so special when people share their reviews. It helps us very much on iTunes to get more exposure. You know, when you scroll down, well, it's not even iTunes anymore, is it? It's actually like Apple Podcasts and Google Podcasts. But on Apple Podcasts, if you scroll down to the bottom of a show and it shows you things you might also like, whenever anybody leaves us a review, it helps us pop up on more of those the more of those searches, the algorithms pay a little more attention to us. And so anyway, with that said, um, um, a, a, a critic, a person leaving a review, a five-star review, they, they go by the name Too Critical, that's T-O-O, Too Critical, uh, they left a review saying, love the pod. I love the podcast. We'll listen forever. I am 13 and started listening when I was 11. Keep up the good and do shout me out. Well, too critical. We're shouting you out. I, I, I just love it when we get you know um, reviews like this. We have a lot of people that are around my age that are a little bit older that listen to the show and they can think back to a time when they actually like like I was a kid when the original The Legend of Zelda came out. I remember renting it as a kid. I remember it being a new thing. I remember people talking about it, and it was this really impressive thing because you could you have a save state and all of that, and it was this kind of for the time it was like a persistent world, a little bit like how Breath of the Wild works now. But also, I really love it when we get these reviews from um, people who are much younger, people whose first Zelda might be Breath of the Wild. Super cool. I'm going to keep on moving. Um, um, oh, this is interesting. This is, this, is, this is cool. I don't know how to say this person's name, but over on, on iTunes, <laughs> on Apple Podcasts, D-H-E-O-S-J-G-F-O-S-J, Q I G J V O W H W U <laughs> said another Chicago fan. Oh, we got another one in Chicago. Oh, we got to have meetups once all this crazy COVID stuff is done. I absolutely love this podcast. Start listening to the podcast while Korok hunting last summer and haven't stopped listening. I'm always excited when I see a new episode is up. I can't wait for the meetups to start happening. I know you guys have mentioned Ganon's pub, but did you guys know about Link's tap room? Hmm, this one sounds familiar. I'm, I might have read this one with Dan, actually. But no, I haven't. i got to check out Link's tap room. And I think what we're going to do is when we do start doing these meetups, and it's probably going to be a couple months from now, everybody, but when we do start doing these meetups, I'm going to make an extra page on our website, uh, kind of like a, an events calendar page, and we can coordinate that way. Let's see, moving on. This one I loved. Uh, Tiny Ganon over on iTunes, Tiny Gannon. We hear a lot from Tiny Gannon. Infinity out of 10! Exclamation point, exclamation point, exclamation point, exclamation point. I started listening to the pod a few months ago, and honestly, no other podcast could compare. It's great to be caught up, even if I do have to wait for new episodes. You know what, Tiny Gannon? I love this. Let's see. Oh, okay. It's great to be caught up, even if I do have to wait for new episodes. I'm going to miss Kate, but I'm excited to hear more about the extended Zelda fam. Well, that's definitely going to happen today, I tell you. Um, I really, really, really wish I could support you guys on Patreon at the highest level, but unfortunately, I'm a 15-year-old with negative $8. This podcast was a surprise addiction for me. I play it while driving around, doing chores, doing more chores, so I can play Zelda. And while playing Zelda, I think it would be pretty neat if you had an episode for speculations on the Breath of the Wild sequel. There's another Breath of the Wild sequel one. Or as I call it, Exhale of the Wild. You guys are the coolest, and I'm looking forward to more great content. Okay, bye. So Tiny Ganon. Thank you so much for this review. I definitely read this review on a previous episode. I think I got a little tricked here because the the uh, title got retitled Infinity Out of Ten. While I still love the support, Tiny Ganon, and we love your support. Um, 
Oh, oh, I have one more. I have one more that I must read. It's over on oh, on Apple Podcasts. Uh, Ruby Cassie, Ruby Casey, R U B I E K A S I E, said a link to a link to past nostalgia. Five star review. This is actually the first Zelda podcast I've ever listened to. I've been diving more into podcasts as my work has shifted to more data entry, and I need something to help me focus on details. It was a logical step to switch from Zelda soundtracks to a Zelda podcast. I was a little unsure at first, but as I've listened to more episodes, I have completely fallen in love with the show. My first Zelda game was A Link to the Past when I was about five years old, so I am a longtime fan of the series. I, it captured my imagination as a child and continues to delight me as an adult. Listening to Kate, David, and the other contributors discuss Zelda reminds me of how I would discuss and theorize about Zelda with my friends growing up as each new game released. Thank you for reminding me of the joy of Zelda. I'm still listening through some of the backlog, and I'm going to keep listening. Maybe the way of the hero led to the Triforce. May the way of the hero lead to the Triforce. Fantastic. A link to past nostalgia. All right, I'm going to get out of that, and we are going to get in to this quiz. Okay, so the way I did this was I have a Zelda quiz. We have a bonus question in the beginning. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to click to, um, I'm going to like I said, I'm going to read out the question. I'll read out the, the four possible answers little bit zoomed out here on my quiz there we go I'm just zooming in on on Google Chrome Um, I'm gonna read out the answers and then I'm gonna cut to all four teams reading the question reading the answers and kind of trying to figure out what their answer will be now I have a different ocarina note for each person so eventually you can kind of tell who is who each person you know one person's a C one person's a D one person's an E and I think the other one's also a D maybe an octave up so that is Celeste Mallory and Ryan I might refer to them as the Coons as I said in the beginning of the episode K-U-H-N is their last name, Shane and Dan. Now this first question, uh, the order of answers will be Celeste, the Coons, Shane, and Dan. The first question is a warm-up question. It's worth no points, zero points. And I'm, I'm gonna keep score as we do this, I think. Zero points, and the warm-up question is, who is the current producer of The Legend of Zelda? Is it A, Koji Kondo, B, Ig Onuma, C, Shigeru Miyamoto, or D, Satoru Iwata? Let's see what they had to say. Who is the current producer of the Legend of Zelda series? Is it Koji Kondo, Aiji Anuma, Shigeru Miyamoto, Satoru Iwata? The producer. I'm going to go with Anuma. I feel, I feel like that's his role. Warm up question. All right. Who is the current producer of the Legend of Zelda series? Our options are Dun Dun Dun, <laughs> Koji Kondo, IG Anuma, uh, Shigeru Miyamoto, or I can't. I don't know Satoru. I'm Awata. guessing it's not the last one. Yeah, I'm not I don't that know how one. to pronounce that. And it's not Koji Kondo. No, Koji Kondo is music. the music. Um, I want to say. <laughs> I like how this is a warm up. I know, right? <laughs> Let's go with a Ayonuma. 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 Yes. All right. This is the warm up question. Who is the current producer of the Legend of Zelda series? Uh, let's see. There's Koji Kondo. E.J. Anuma, Shigeru Miyamoto, and Satoru Iwata. Um, that would be E.J. Anuma. Um, I got to see him at uh, E3 2016, so that was pretty sweet um, when they had the Breath of the Wild uh, exhibit. Who is the current producer of the Legend of Zelda series? Well, we're starting out with a real strong, real strong question. Um, I can't even pronounce any of these names, let alone really pick one. Um, Miyamoto sounds like a name that I've heard David say, like, a lot. So my guess is Shijiro Miyamoto. There we go. Gonna pop that one in. That's my answer. Um, next one. Okay, so let's see here. That again was uh, zero points, but Celeste... 
Mallory Ryan and Shane all got it right with IG and Numa. And Dan, unfortunately, uh, went with Shigeru Miyamoto. So all four of those people are people that are connected with Nintendo. Koji Kondo, of course, is the music. Um, sh- you know, it's it's easy to say, uh, to talk about Shigeru Miyamoto because he definitely was the producer of the first Legend of Zelda. But at, around the time of Majora's Mask, he handed that off to IG Anuma. And IG Anuma has taken care of all of the Zeldas up through Breath of the Wild 2 so far. And then actually Satoru Iwata is, it's interesting, Satoru Iwata was involved with the original The Legend of Zelda. In fact, IG Numa, Satoru, and Miyamoto were kind of the the three that were really working on that original game back in the, what is it, the 80s, the early 80s. But Satoru Iwata has actually moved on to become the main producer for all the Mario games. So I thought that was kind of a fun question to have because all of those names probably do sound a little familiar. They're all real people that work at Nintendo. Okay, question Question two, but really question one. Question one, the first question with points is, I think this is an easy one. In Ocarina of Time, who is the Sage of Light? Is it A, Zelda, B, Sheik, C, Raru, or D, Impa? We're actually going to hear from Shane first on this one. In Ocarina of Time, who is the Sage of Light? Um, Let's see, Sage of Light... Uh, first one's Zelda, then that's Sheik, and it's Rar- Raru, I always can't say his name, and Impa, and uh, yeah, Raru is the, the name. I I am terrible at uh, some of these names, so forgive me. In the Ocarina of Time, who is the Sage of Light? And I feel bad, because I always tell people this is the only, one of the only games I've actually played. The Sage of Light. Uh, okay, let's think. There's. It's not gonna be Zelda, right? Uh, it can't be. Sheik, Raru, or Impa. I don't think it was Sheik, cause Sheik is Zelda, right? Isn't that a spoiler alert, by the way? Sheik is Zelda, so Raru or Impa. Impa was her guardian. I'm gonna go with. Uh, I'm gonna go with the R. I'm gonna go. Rarua, 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 ra, ra, that one. Yep, final answer. Moving on next. In Ocarina of Time, who is the Sage of Light? Zelda, Sheik, Raru, Impa. To Raru. Raru, I always think of Scooby Doo whenever I hear his name. In Ocarina of Time, who is the Sage of Light? Zelda, Sheik, Impa, or Raru. 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 It's Raru. It's Raru. It is Raru. The lovely flying creature. What are you talking about? <laughs> Isn't he the flying guy no. from the beginning? He's yeah, the he old is. man. Huh. You're thinking the owl. Yeah. That's not the same. Eh, it's rumored it is. Okay. Okay, so I actually really enjoyed um, that little back and forth with Mallory and Ryan there at the end because they're both a little bit right. Um, Kaipora Gabora is the flying owl in Ocarina of Time, and uh, it was long rumored that Kaipora Gabora was Raru in, I guess you could say, owl form. And it was actually confirmed that Kaipora Gabora and Raru are the same creature or the same spirit in um, the Zelda Encyclopedia, not the Encyclopedia. I think the Historia, I think the the Hylian Historia, Hylian Historia. The green one, the green book of the red, blue, and green books. I can't remember what it's called, but I know that Kate had it. I have the encyclopedia. Uh, it was officially confirmed that Kaipora Gabora and Raru were the same celestial being. And Raru, of course, is the Sage of Light. So that is one point for everybody. Mallory at one, Dan at one, Celeste at one, Shane at one. The next question, question number two is... Various Legend of Zelda characters have made special appearances in a variety of other games. Which of the following games did not feature a Legend of Zelda character? A. Super Mario RPG B. Donkey Kong Country C. Super Smash Bros. Or D. Soul Calibur 2 Let's see what they had to say. Various Legends of Zelda characters have made special appearances in a variety of other games. Which of the following games did not feature a Legend of Zelda character? We have Super Mario RPG, Donkey Kong Country, Super Smash Brothers, or Soul Calibur. So I know Soul Calibur had Link, 
Super Smash Brothers, of course, has had Sheik and uh, Link all the time. Donkey Kong Country or Super Mario RPG? You know, I feel like Super Mario RPG would have somebody in there. I played a little bit of that game. I'm going to go Donkey Kong Country. But you know what? I could see them jumping on like... Uh, no, I don't know. I'm a, I got to go with the gut here, guys. I'm going to say it's going to be Donkey Kong Country. That's that's my go for. All right, Donkey Kong Country it is. Uh, answer installed. Moving on. Various Legend of Zelda characters have made special appearances in a variety of other games. Which of the following games did not feature a Legend of Zelda character? So Shane just did this, so he's already got a point. <laughs> Shane's going to get every one of the points. <laughs> so options are Super Mario RPG, Donkey Kong Country, Super Smash Brothers, or Soul Calibur 2. Oh, it's Super Smash. No. <laughs> I'm don't, just kidding. Yeah, no, don't count that. <laughs> well, we can take out Super Smash and Super Mario RPG because I remember those two in Chain's episode. Soul Calibur, I know he's in one of them. I don't know if it's two. So I'm going to say Donkey Kong Country. I would Kong say Country. Donkey Kong Country. Yeah. Yes. Various Legend of Zelda characters have made special appearances in a variety of other games. Which of the following games did not feature a Legend of Zelda character? Super Mario RPG, Donkey Kong Country, Super Smash Brothers, Soul Calibur 2. Well, let's see here. Super Mario RPG, we, me and David just did episode 3 a while back. That was, um, yeah, I had Link in it. Donkey Kong Country technically uh, has nothing, I, I believe, in it. Donkey Kong Country 2 has uh, the avatar, I believe, of, of Link in it. I believe it's 2. Um, so, Super Smash Brothers, we know characters are in there. Soul Calibur 2, of course, uh, has Link in it. And so, I'm going to say Donkey Kong Country. Various Legend of Zelda characters have made special appearances in a variety of other games. Which of the following games did not feature a Legend of Zelda character? Super Mario RPG, Donkey Kong Country, Super Smash Brothers, Soul Calibur 2. Donkey Kong Country. I love Donkey Kong Country. Two and three are my favorite ones in the series. And I never came across anyone from the Legend of Zelda. Yeah, that's absolutely right. Another correct correct answers all across the board. Uh, Mallory and Ryan with two, Dan with two, Celeste with two, and Shane with two points right now. I think we're going to just keep on moving. It's absolutely right, Donkey Kong Country. Um, it's it's easy to kind of think that maybe Rare would throw some, some joke in there with Link. I don't know about the Donkey Kong Country 2 Link avatar, but Shane might be onto something with that. Um, Mario RPG has Link... Or a character wearing a green hat that that they allude to being Link sleeping in a bed. And then, of course, Smash Brothers has Zelda stuff all over the place. And uh, uh, Soul Calibur 2. In fact, 2, it wasn't a trick. Soul Calibur 2 is the one with, with a great GameCube version is the one with Link. All right, moving on. Question number three. Question number three. What is the first game in which Link transforms into an animal? A. The Legend of Zelda. B. A Link to the Past. C, Link's Awakening. D, Twilight Princess. Let's see what our team had to say. Looks like we're starting with Celeste on this one. What is the first game in which Link transforms into an animal? The Legend of Zelda, A Link to the Past, Link's Awakening, Twilight Princess. Okay. I don't think he even transforms into an animal in the first Legend of Zelda or Link's Awakening. And he turns into a little pink bunny in the dark world in A Link to the Past. I was kind of disappointed when you couldn't stay as the bunny. But it was so cute. I'm going to go with A Link to the Past. What is the first game in which, in which Link transforms into an animal? Well... I know he did it in Twilight Princess. 
and that's the only one of these games I've ever played. Um, so I'm going to go Twilight Princess, even though I feel like it's the like easy out answer. It's like the trick question that makes you think that it's like, that's the one he definitely did it. Um, but, you know, push come to shove. I've probably got all the other ones right already, so maybe I can take a hit on this one. All right. Twilight Princess, it is. What is the first game in which Link transforms into an animal? Legend of Zelda, A Link to the Past, Link's Awakening, Twilight Princess. I'm going to have to say A Link to the Past. Um, he turns into a pink bunny. What is the first game in which Link transforms into an animal? Okay. Ooh, the first game. So the options are The Legend of Zelda, okay. A Link to the Past, mm-hmm. Link's Awakening, and Twilight Princess. Now, I'm going to be a zero help for Team Poon <laughs> on this question because of all of those games, the only one that I have played is Twilight Princess. And unless it's a trick question, I feel like it's not Twilight Princess. It's slightly a trick because in Link to the Past, you go to the Dark World and you become a rabbit in a Dark World. In, the, in A Link to the Past? Yes, in A Link to the Past. Like it's not just a bunny hood, like you're actually No, a you're rabbit. actually a rabbit. Okay. Because it, it turns you into the, like, manifestation of who you are. So, I guess. So, you're a rabbit? I guess so. Like, okay. bad guys turn into, like, more demon-esque things and stuff like that, so. Oh. But it's also A Link to the Past, so it's not, like, super scary. But, yes. Interesting. All right, A Link to the Past. Final answer. Okay, so, yep, that's what it was. It was A Link to the Past. Twilight Princess, obviously, he turns into a wolf. As far as I'm concerned, he turns into a bunny. He kind of stands upright in A Link to the Past, but I'm going to write that off on the art style. Um, Link turns into a weird pink bunny. I remember the first time I played A Link to the Past, once I once he turned into a bunny and you couldn't jump and you couldn't use any of your items, as a kid, I was kind of like, I'm out. And that was, uh, that was the first time I stopped playing A Link to the Past. I'm very, very grateful that at the end of Season 2, Kate and I reviewed A Link to the Past, and I was forced to play all the way through it because it was a great game. So let's see. That puts us... Dan is down by one right now. Manly and Ryan are at three. Dan's at two. Celeste is at three. Shane is at three. Our next question is... What is... Oh, what is the first game? I almost reread the last question. Moving forward here. I got to click forward through the quiz. Here we are. Here we are. All right. What is the name of the upbeat salesman from Wind Waker that reappears in Breath of the Wild? I think we all know this one. Here we go. A, Happy Mask Salesman. B, Beetle. C, Kilton, or D, Phonograph Man. Uh, today we're gonna be we're gonna be starting with, today. We're gonna start with Shane on this one. Here we go. What is the name of the upbeat salesman from the Wind Waker that uh, reappears in Breath of the Wild? Uh, Happy Mask Salesman, Beetle, Kilton, Phonogram Man, and that would be Beetle. What is the name of the upbeat salesman from Wind Waker that reappears in Breath of the Wild? Well, never played Wind Waker. So let's just go. Oh, Beetle. Beetle's there, right? I think it's Beetle. Beetle's definitely in Breath of the Wild. He seems super happy. I- I'm going to go Beetle. Got to go Beetle. Okay. What is the name of the upbeat salesman from Wind Waker that reappears in Breath of the Wild? I don't need options for this one. It's my main man, Beetle. I love... I should have worn my Beetle shirt. I have a shirt that has, (laughs) like, from, like, the Beatles, the band, all four, like, pictures of them, but all four of them are Beetle from Legend of Zelda. It's a wonderful shirt. And he's also in Skyward Sword. Oh, yeah, he is, and the little flying thing that he's pedaling yep. on. Yeah, 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 yeah. That's, that should be a bonus point. <laughs> for, for us not knowing the warm-up question. <laughs> <laughs> what is the name of the upbeat salesman from Wind Waker that reappears in Breath of the Wild? The Happy Mask Salesman, Beetle, Kilton, Phonogram Man. Oh, it's Beetle. And if you remember in Skyward Sword, he gets kind of mad when you don't make a purchase. I don't know if I like his customer service in that game. I'm going to go with Beetle. Yes, of course, it is Beetle. No question there. I think everybody could answer that one without a multiple choice. But I wanted to kind of see if Dan would get it, and he did. You know, it's interesting because we have four different 
teams here, all with slightly different Zelda experiences. And one of my favorite things about being a Zelda fan is that you don't need to know everything, but everyone has their own experience with the versions of the Zelda games that they've played. And uh, even even Mr. Dan, who's only played a couple of Zelda games, he's new, a new fan to the Zelda series, was still able to recognize Beetle. All right, moving forward. So that's, yeah, everybody got that one. We're at Mallory and Ryan at four, Dan at three, Celeste at four, Shane at four. Question number five. What game, this is of 15. We have 15. I think I'll take a break around question number seven or something. What game is the first to allow the player to control a character other than Link? Now, this one I feel a little bad. I think, I hope, I hope it wasn't too misleading, um, but I can, I can speak to it afterwards. The key here is control a character other than Link, where the player is controlling that character. In other words, we change to another character's control. It's not Link controlling the character. Here we go. We're gonna start with Dan on this one. What game is the first to allow the player to control a character other than Link? Well, that is quite a question. So we have Link to the Past, Majora's Mask, The Wind Waker, or Spirit Tracks. I'm going to go ahead, and I got, I got that gut feeling again. And my gut is telling me that I don't know this. Um, so let's, let's, uh, let's uh, put it to the random guest generator. I'm going to go Wind Waker. No, I'm going to go Spirit Tracks. I'm going to go Spirit Tracks for just some reason. I... Like it better than the other ones. Spirit Tracks, coming at you. What game is the first to allow the player to control a character other than Link? A Link to the Past, Majora's Mask, The Wind Waker, or Spirit Tracks? Okay. I'm thinking a little too deeply. <laughs> With Majora's Mask, because you transform into the spirit of the deceased non-playable characters like Macaw and the Goron and the, the Deku Scrub. Wind Waker, you can control the seagull. It's not one of his first game. Link to the past. I don't remember controlling anyone else in that one. Spirit Tracks, you get to play as Zelda. I'm going to go with Spirit Tracks because I think my Majora's Mask and Wind Waker assessments are, well, you know, Wind Waker, do the sequels count as characters? <laughs> Not playable characters? Oh, I'm going to go with Spirit Tracks. I feel like that's the safe answer. What game is the first to allow the player to control a character other than Link? A Link to the Past, Majora's Mask, The Wind Waker, Spirit Tracks. Ooh, okay, so as you know, I haven't gotten through Majora's Mask. Um, I, get, I know you can put on the mask and become different characters. It's still Link. Uh, Link to the Past, I don't recall anybody else that you play as. Unless you consider the the rabbit, but the rabbit again is Link. Um, Wind Waker, I don't recall playing as anyone else. Maybe I can't remember if you played as Tetra at all. Um, but I know for sure Spirit Tracks, you can play as Zelda in the uh, in the Phantom Knight form. So. I'm going to go Spirit Tracks on this one. What game is the first to allow the player to control a character other than Link? <sighs> so the options are... I know. A Link to the Past, Majora's Mask, Wind Waker, or Spirit Tracks. So of these four, I've only played two. I don't know, I've, I've played, played Majora's and I've played Wind Waker. So Wind Waker, you do. You can put the little pear thing on your head, and then the seagull comes. But is that a considered a character? That's that's. Oh, that's you the also thing. control Medley. 
Ooh, there it is. And okay, you so have, oh yeah, yeah, yeah there's one. the whole song of Control or whatever yep. it is. But so. what was the first game to allow? So <laughs> no, I have no idea. Wind cause... Waker predates Spirit Track, so we don't have to worry about that one okay. game we don't know. <laughs> so in Majora's, I... do you control another character? It's been so long since I've played Majora's. I've been wanting to replay it, um, hopefully with Dave when we do the playthrough. Um, mm. But I, I know you play as... Goron Link, but you're still you. No, you're still you. I know. I was going to say, because you get the masks. And but Link you're still to the Past, I don't think you play as anyone else. So I'm going to say Wind Waker. You're going to say Wind Waker? Yeah, I'm going to stick with Wind Waker on that one. Let's do it up. Okay, so this was uh, the thought process here. You know, honestly, I feel bad about the seagull thing in Wind Waker because I think it could be debated that that is a character that you're controlling. But I was thinking of, uh, you know, like a. Uh, the equivalent of like a, a humanoid character just flying the seagull around a little bit is almost more of a mechanic but i digress uh, so I, I agree that that might have been a little um a little bit confusing however uh in a link in majora's mask you do control those weird little statues you can put little statues down and maybe you control other people but you're always still link in the wind waker it's true that you control medley and even the little um deku scrub however and you know it's a technicality but you're still playing as link and he's doing his little mind trance thing and then that is controlling the character so you're still your agency is still with link or link is still the one that is uh controlling these things it's true that in spirit tracks um it's the only one out of these four where you are independently controlling an additional character and that character is Zelda. So we went with I went with Zelda on that one. I'm sorry if it gave anybody uh, too much stress, and I think it could be debated, but Spirit Tracks was the answer for this quiz. So that puts Mallory and Ryan at four, Dan at four, Celeste at five, and Shane at five. Moving on. Let's see here. Question number six. In which of the following games does the hook shot not appear? Is it A, A Link to the Past, B, Link's Awakening, C, Majora's Mask, or D, Four Swords Adventures. This one's going to start with Shane. Let's see what we have here. In which of the following games does the hookshot not appear? A Link to the Past, Link's Awakening, Majora's Mask, or Four Swords Adventures? Okay, let's see here. I'm pretty sure Link's Awakening has the hookshot. I just played the remake probably like six months ago, so maybe seven months ago. So I think that was in there. I I think Link of the Past has it as well. Um, Majora's Mask. I'm assuming the hookshot's on there just because Ocarina of Time had it, but I, I don't know. Ford Swords Adventures, though. I am not entirely sure because I did not play through that at all. Um, I'm going to have to say Four Swords Adventures on that one. Hopefully I'm right. Which of the following games uh, does the hookshot not appear? Well, I mean, so we have A Link to the Past, Link's Awakening, Majora's Mask, and the Four Swords Adventures. Now... I think if we use logic in this whole thing, uh, it's going to have to be, my guess is four swords, because if he's carrying four swords, he's not going to have room in his little satchel for a hook shot, you know? So I think that's the smart choice. It's the it's the right choice. And like I said, I'm pretty sure I've gotten all of these correct so far in the first place. So again, I can take a, I can take a hit. So four swords adventures, I think, is the only game where the hook shot does not appear. All right, in which of the following games does the hook shot not appear? Ah, oh, man, for a second, I thought this was going to be a trick question. I thought Wind Waker was going to be an option because in Wind Waker, it's the grappling hook, not the hook shot. That's the trick. But you um, do get hook shot in that. I, thought, I think you get both, actually. Do you? Yeah, you get both. Oh, well, I'm replaying. I haven't gotten there yet. <laughs> it's been so long since I've gotten past the first, like, temple of that game. Okay. Um, okay, so which of the following games? Link to the Past... Link's you have it. Awakening, Majora's, or Four Swords. So I'm useless. I have only played Majora's of all these games. And Majora's, I believe you have it. Yeah. Right? Yes. Or, or is do it we not? Shot? 
Whereas you just get the long shot on that one. That's a trick. I don't know if it's a trick question. We may be overthinking this. Well, I'm going to say it's a 50-50 between the two games neither one of us has played. I'm so, Leaks Awakening or Four Swords. Four Swords Adventures. Because it's like a group game. And I feel like if we're all rocketing around in the air. <laughs> well, it's, it's, it's... On our hook shot. It's the old style game. You're from above. So you can still do a hook shot and like get from edge to edge, which is how you use it, Link to the Pass. I don't know. What are you thinking? Link's Awakening or Four Swords? That's what I'm thinking. I'm going to say Four Swords still. Okay. I agree with you. I'm with you. I'm on board. In which of the following games does the hook shot not appear? Boy, I love that hook shot. A Link to the Past, Link's Awakening, Majora's Mask, Four Swords Adventures. So... I have never played Four Swords Adventures. I do have the Link to the Past Game Boy Advance port that has it on it, but I never had any friends who had the Link cable where we could play together. There's a hookshot in Majora's Mask. There's a hookshot in Link to the Past. I've played only the remake of Link's Awakening. Oh my gosh, and that was just a few months ago. Oh gosh, almost a year, really. I'm going to go with Four Swords Adventures. Okay, that was across the board. Everyone ended up getting that right. Dan's logic was questionable for sure, but he lucked out there and got it. So that puts Mallory and Ryan at five, Dan at five, Celeste at six, and Shane at six. Four Swords Adventures, I was lucky enough to play it. It's it's actually technically the GameCube sequel to the um, Game Boy Advance cartridge that Celeste was talking about there. But... um. You know, 10, 15 years ago, maybe almost 20 years ago, when it came out for the GameCube, uh, myself and three other friends, we all had Game Boy Advances, Game Boy Advance SPs at the time, and we plugged into uh, the GameCube and we actually did play legitimately Four Swords Adventures. And that's the game where you all four play on the screen at the same time, and then your Game Boy Advances become a second screen. One person gets map information, one person gets treasure information, one person gets information about weaknesses on bosses, and then I, I honestly can't remember what the fourth person gets, uh, quest agenda. And, uh, I don't know, something like that. And it's a blast. It's an absolute blast. I am constantly looking for Four Swords Adventures. There's a used video game store in Wicker Park here in Chicago that I actually saw it at um, one time. And I thought, oh, the next time I'm in here, I'm going to have to pick it up. And of course, the next time I got there, it was gone because I think it's a difficult find. But I vow that at some point in this show's history, we are going to be playing Four Swords Adventures with three other people. Anyway, Four Swords Adventures. Okay, last question. We're going to take a break after that. Um, question number seven here. Question number seven. They do start getting harder. Um, in fact, I, in fact, I, I think the questions in general increase in difficulty. So we'll take this as our final question before the break. Question number seven is, what is the name of the King of Hyrule that assists Link in the Wind Waker? We're going to start with Mallory and Ryan on this one. All right. What is the name of the king of Hyrule that assists Link in the Wind Waker? Oh, uh, Red Lion. Yeah, I know. I was going to say, the king of Red Lions, <laughs> but I guess that's not really All his right, name. I need your help on this one. This is your game. <sighs> yeah, well, it's not the first one. So, Harkinian Hyrule. Daltus Gustav Hyrule. I like that, but it's not Sounds it. Sounds very Russian. I think it's the third one. I think it's Daphne's Nohansen Hyrule because it just looks familiar on the page right now. Yeah. And then Nohansen Daltus Hyrule. I think it's the Daphne's one. Daphne's Nohansen Hyrule. Okay, I'm good. This is more you. I unfortunately, Wind Waker is not my my forte. Yeah, it's been a very long time since I played it. Replaying, but I have not done anything yet. <laughs> what is the name of the King of Hyrule that assists Link in the Wind Waker? Ooh, okay. It's been a while since I've played this. Um, Harken, Harkonnen Hyrule, Deltas Gustav Hyrule, Daphneus Nohansen Hyrule, or Nohansen Deltas Hyrule. Oh. Um, I, this one I'm guessing on for sure, but I. I want to say it's either the No Hansen Delta High Rule or the Daphne's No Hansen High Rule. So I'm going to say 
No Hansen, Deltas, Hyrule. David, these are hard. Come on. What is the name of the King of Hyrule who assists Link in the Wind Waker? Harkinian Hyrule, Daltus Gustav Hyrule, Daphnis Nohansen Hyrule, Nohansen Daltus Hyrule. Oh no, David, this just isn't fair. I feel like it's Daphnis, but isn't that his name in Breath of the Wild as well? I just always called him the king. <laughs> not Elvis. Although, it'd be cool to hear him sing, like, you know, my achy breaky fart. Oh my god. <laughs> Billy Ray's swear. Sorry, Elvis. <laughs> Can't help falling in love, loose suede shoes. I think we need a um, Zelda cover album of those Elvis songs. Daphnis. No, Hanson Harrell. That's the one I'm gonna do. What is the name of the king of Hyrule? Uh, what is the name of the king of Hyrule that assists Link in the Wind Waker? Um, so, these are all names that people probably had in the, in the, in the series. That's, oof. This is just a bunch of, this is just letters all slammed together to just create nonsense. <laughs> Um, so we can definitely say it ends in Hyrule. I feel pretty confident on that one. Let's go Daphne's. Daphne's Nohansen Hyrule. I, I watched Scooby-Doo last night for a little bit, so Daphne's on the tip of the tongue. So let's go with that one. Why not? Daphne, Daphne's Nohansen Hyrule. There we go. Okay, so uh, Dan getting lucky one more time there. He was absolutely right. It is Daphne's Nohansen Hyrule. Um, Shane getting his first question wrong. Both Shane and Dan guessed there. Dan got lucky. Shane was a little less lucky. So this is very interesting. As we go into the break, we are almost tied across the board. Mallory and, Mallory and Ryan have six points. They've gotten six correct so far. Dan has six points. He's gotten six so far. Shane has six points, six correct so far. And Celeste is currently in the lead with seven correct answers right now, seven points. So we're going to take a break. Um, uh, you guys are going to hear an ad real quick, and we're going to come back with question number eight, and we'll keep on keeping on here. I'll see you in a bit. Hey, this is TC. And this is Jim from the Studio Demands It podcast. Where every episode, we take a demand from a hypothetical studio. Which could be you. And challenge ourselves to conceptualize, pitch, and craft a film based on the stipulations. Or the demands. We are given. We talk about movies all the time. Particularly, we complain about the choices made in the films we've seen. We're nerds like that. And, of course, like any good nerd does, we automatically assume that we could do better. Even with the demands and restrictions that clearly must have been put on by a production. So head on over to studiodemandsit.com and listen to our previous library of episodes. Our library of previous episodes. Our precious library, Jim. <laughs> our library of precious episodes. <laughs> You're a pirate Smeagol. <laughs> <laughs> uh, okay. So head on over to studiodemandsit.com to listen to our library of episodes. And submit your demand for a future episode, too. So go do that. Okay, bye. Okay, end of ad. Hey there, my name's Abu Zafar, and I'm the creator of the Lore Party Podcast. It's a show about our favorite video game universes and the stories they tell. What does that mean exactly? Well, we don't do game reviews or first impressions, and we don't talk about gameplay or the latest news in the gaming industry. Our main focus is with the lore, the stories, the characters, and the worlds that we jump into every time that we fire up our favorite games. If that sounds like your cup of tea, just search Lore Party on your favorite podcast platform and check out some of our episodes. Thanks for listening. And we are back from the break. This is David Geisler hosting you through this Zelda quiz. Um, again, we're at a bit of a, almost a tie right now. Mallory and Ryan with six points, Dan with six, Shane with six, and Celeste in the lead with seven. The questions definitely get more difficult. Uh, we are gonna be at question eight, 
of 15. The final question actually is pretty tricky, and it's going to be worth two points. So we'll see if it helps anybody pull ahead right at the last second. So question number eight is, in the trading sequence in Oracle of Seasons, which is the game for Game Boy Color, came out in 2001, and just talked about it in the previous episode with Lore Party. Um, in the, or when I was a guest on Lore Party, pardon me, I almost got confused. In the trading sequence in Oracle of Seasons, what did you have to bring Malin? Was it a Kukadex? Was it B, a Noble Sword? Was it C, a Pokedex? Or D, Megaphone? Here we go. Shane's going to lead the way on this one. Let's see what he has to say. In the trading sequence in Ocarina of Seasons, or Ocarina, Oracle of Seasons, what did you have to bring Malin? Was it the Kukodex, Noble Sword, Pokedex, or Megaphone? Uh, I'm going to say Megaphone. I, it, I haven't played this 15 plus years for those, so I, I'm going to say Megaphone. In the trading sequence in Oracle of Seasons, oh god, I've never played it. <laughs> what did you have to bring Malin? Kukadex, Noble Sword, Pokedex, Megaphone. Oh my gosh. Um, Malin is not the same as Anju. Anju, or she was nameless in Ocarina of Time with her love of Kukos. Uh, gosh. <laughs> but I can't picture Malin using a sword or needing a sword. Although. She's the one who gives you the egg in Ocarina of Time to wake her father when he's sleeping by Hyrule Castle. I'm gonna go with Kukadex. I don't, I don't think a Pokedex is in there unless there's this weird crossover like in Link's Awakening, Yoshi Dolls. Kukadex, right. In the trading sequence of Oracle of Seasons, oh, we're all very familiar with that. Uh, what do you have to bring to Malin? Um, so I'm going to go on a, on a whim here and assume it's not the Pokedex or the Kukadex because I don't, it's, that sounds like something that would be in Final Fantasy, a Megaphone or a Noble Sword. I'm going to go, do they have Megaphones in like the Zelda universe? I feel like that's technologically a little advanced for what I've seen him have to do with. I mean, he's still blown into a flute 90% of the time. If there's a megaphone, you feel like you could upgrade. Um, and I feel like Noble Sword is just kind of too general, you know? Why you didn't, it has to be a noble sword, just not a regular sword, too. Um, you know what? Let's go, let's go megaphone. I got a good feeling about this one. And like I said before, I've gotten all the other ones right. So I, it should be sitting pretty. Megaphone it is. There we go. In Oracle of Seasons. Fantastic. <laughs> what did you have to bring to Malin? Okay, so this is super fun. Neither of us have played Oracle of Seasons or Oracle of Ages. But I'm going to go with C already and say Pokedex. <laughs> Pokedex! <laughs> <laughs> no, don't count that. I love it. Um, A Kukodex. See, but here's the thing. If that's similar to Pokedex. Maybe there is. Maybe you catch cuckoos and you have a Kukodex. Well, if memory serves me right, I'm listening to David talk. Malin is one of the farm girls? I think it's Marin, but right? Well, you know, it's always between Marin and Malin. Right, it's, but it's, it's right. So it's one so of those. Who so. It is. So, so I'm going to say Cuckoo Dex. Yeah, we'll go with that. Any listeners who have played this game are probably Can I get a lifeline? Screaming <laughs> at their radios right now or their radios. What year is it? Their yeah. their phones. <laughs> all right, Cuckoo Dex going all in. Nice, Ryan and Mallory and Celeste. Everybody kind of if the, the the people who picked up on the fact that Malin usually is associated with chickens and the farm. The Kukadex is what you give her. Um, this, was, this was a fun one because obviously Pokedex is probably not going to be in a Zelda game. That's a Pokemon reference. But I think they were having fun with the name, they being Capcom. Because you might recall Capcom actually was the developers, the creators of the two Oracle games. And then it was licensed by Nintendo. 
And so I'm sure Capcom had, you know, the reins were a little looser and they had fun making references to other things. So Kukadex was the right, was the right one. So right now that puts Mallory and Ryan at five, at seven. Dan is at six. Celeste is in the lead at eight. And Shane is at six. So Shane and Dan are tied. Oh my gosh. Oh my gosh. Right now, Shane and Dan are tied in, in last place, I have to admit. And then it's Mallory and Ryan and then Celeste in the lead. Moving forward. This is interesting. I've, of course, I listened to all these questions when I had to edit this, but I did I did not keep track of who got what right or wrong. So this is, I'm experiencing this right along with you guys, and I couldn't be happier about it. All right, here we go. Uh, question number nine. Name the three dragons in Breath of the Wild. A, Rudinia, Naboris, Ruda. B, Dinral, Ruda, Tingle. C, Omanu, Feror, Mado. Or D, Farouche, Nydra, Dinral. Perhaps you know already. Let's see if they do. Here we go. We're going to start up with Dan. Name the three dragons in Breath of the Wild. Didn't know they had names, first of all. Um, and I doubt it's anything like Game of Thrones. So Rhaegal isn't even on here. Um, Rudania, Nobris, and Ruda. I don't think that's it. That's the other people. So it's not the first one, and I don't think they. I don't think there's ever been a dragon named Tingle in the history of dragons. So let's go. It's not the first two. I'm on Al Farash, and you know I'm gonna. Oh Farash. Ugh. You know what? I'm gonna go Farash, Nadra, and Dinral. I got a good feeling about that one. Got it. I, I, yeah, we're gonna go fresh. Nydra and Din, Dinral. Oh, I'm doing so good. Oh. Name the three dragons in Breath of the Wild: Rodania, Naboris, Ruta, Dinral, Ruta, Tingle, Omana, Farosh, Nado, Farosh, Nydra, Dinral. The last one, because I collect their scales and elements. It sounds so gross, doesn't it? Farosh Nidra Dinral. Do you guys pronounce that the same way? Name the three dragons in Breath of the Wild. Oh man. Um I think it's the last one. I think so. It's definitely not the I like option two. One. Okay, so the three options. Rudania, <laughs> Naboris, and Ruda. Dinral, Ruda, and Tingle. That's totally it. Tingle. No. My it's favorite not. dragon. <laughs> uh three omen Ra. Or Omen, Omen Ra, that's not it. Omen Ah, Farosh, and Meadow, or Farosh, Nadra, and Dinral. I think it's the last it one, because I know Farosh one. is one. Well, I can tell you right now, Meadow is one of the beasts. Um, so is um, Naboris. Okay. So that takes out those ones. So it's definitely the last one. Farosh, Nadra, and Dinral. is everyone's favorite little, little elf man. Yes. Okay, so He just keeps showing one. up. He does, it's true. Is he in Breath at all? No, but he's mentioned. He has his own island. Of course he does. <laughs> All right. Let's see. Name the three dragons in Breath of the Wild. Rudania, Naboris, Ruta, Dinral, Ruta, Tingle, Omana, Farouche, and Mado, or Farouche... Nadra and Dinral. Um, I'm going to say Farosh, Nadra, and Dinral just because they've got the three spirits names in there of the Triforce. Yes, I loved that. I love that. I think I think everyone might have gotten that one right if I remember correctly here. So that puts Mallory and Ryan at eight, Dan at seven, Celeste in the lead at nine and shane also at seven however shane was the only one that noticed the connection farouche nydra and dinral are all loosely named after the three goddesses farouche is similar to <gasps> pharon pharah farouche nydra is Nehru, and dinral is din pharon 
Farrar. You know, Farron, I think Farron's the land. <laughs> Even I'm getting a little confused. But they are connected to the three goddesses, which is really neat. I didn't even notice that until um, Shane pointed it out in his answer. So that's super cool. Farron. I think it's Farron. The Farron Woods. Farron Woods. All right. So question number 10. What's the first song that... Oh, this is a great one, guys. This one gets nuts. This question's phenomenal. I can't wait to talk about it after we hear the four answers. It seems like it should be so simple. It's this kind of question that everyone thinks they know the answer to. And it's actually quite complicated. Here we go. This question, question number 10 is, what's the first song Link learns in Ocarina of Time? Is it A, Saria's song, B, Zelda's lullaby, C, Epona's song, or D, Song of Storms. We're going to start with Mallory, Mallory and Ryan. Here we go. What is the first song Link learns in Ocarina of Time? I can tell you what it is right off the bat. So our options are <laughs> Saria's song, Zelda's lullaby, Epona's song, or Song of Storms. You learn it when you get your first Ocarina, and that is Saria's song. Oh, because she's there. It's when you're first leaving the uh, the forest. Right. Yeah, but she has that longing, like, oh, sad. Right. She's like, sad if goodbye. you need to talk to me. Yeah, 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 yeah. Okay. I'm going to trust you. You're the ocarina expert. I, that is one of my favorite ones, so. What is the first song in Quarantine and Ocarina of Time? Saria's song, Zelda's lullaby, Epona's song, Song of Storms. Okay, it's not Epona's song or Song of Storms. Okay, Zelda's lullaby is whistled to you by Impa. I th you don't learn Saria's song until you meet her in the forest grove in front of the forest temple when you're children, when you're young, Link. And I don't think you have to travel that far through the Lost Woods until a little bit later. But why would she... Okay, you get an ocarina when you are leaving the forest. So we're going to meet you on the bridge. But I feel like she would teach you a song when she gives you the ocarina. I mean, just, hey, here's an instrument. Um, play whatever you want on it. Fiddle, fiddle around. I don't know. I think it is, oh gosh, oh man, Saria's song or Saul's lullaby. <sighs> I'm going to go Saul's lullaby. So. What's the first song Link learns in Ocarina of Time? Saria's song, Zelda's lullaby, Epona's song, Song of Storms. Let's see here. So Saria's song you learn at the Forest Temple, I believe. And that's when you're older. Zelda's lullaby, I'm pretty sure you learn that right at the beginning when you meet her I think man this is my favorite game and I, I can't I can't remember Song of Storms I know is not not till later Epona's song um yeah oh, it's a toss-up between Epona's song and uh Zelda's lullaby um let's see here okay you get Epona later on at Lon Lon Ranch but do you get that before? No, you'd have to have the ocarina to, to play it. So I'm assuming you'd have the lullaby first. So I'm going to say Zelda's lullaby. Okay, what is the first song Link learns in the Ocarina of Time? Saria's song, Zelda's lullaby, Epona's song, or the Song of Storms? I think it's Saria's song. Saria? I think it's Saria's song. Again, it's been like 10 years since I played this game. But I remember she's the green-haired 
girl who ends up being the forest sage. So I do know some of the sage going back to the first one. Um, I think she ends up being the forest sage. And I think, well, when do you get it? You have to pull it out of the moat when Zelda flings it. And then you go pick it up. And then you do some stuff with some people. And you know what? Maybe it is the Song of Storms. It's not a Pona. And I doubt it would be Zelda's lullaby. You know what? Let's go Song of Storms. I'm second guessing myself. Song of Storms. It's the only one that doesn't have somebody's name in it, so maybe it's it's a trick or something like that. Yeah. Okay. Song of Storms. Final answer. Moving on. Ooh, that was a rough one, Dan. That was a rough. You were so close. You were so close. So it's so funny because everybody has played Ocarina so many times, and everyone kind of you it gets blurry so basically this is how it works um it's very easy to forget that there's actually two ocarinas you get a forest so the first time so saria here we go we're gonna say it this way saria actually interfaces with link three times and all three times it's ocarina related the first time she uh, interfaces with you is when Child Link is about to go to Hyrule Field and she meets him on the bridge. Ryan was remembering that a little bit in his in his memory. Um, she only gives you an ocarina. Even myself, everyone thinks like, oh, well, you must learn a song there. Even Celeste brought that up. She just gives you an ocarina. Uh, then you go to the castle and that is actually, in fact, where you learn your first song. It's whistled to you by Impa once you meet Zelda for the first time, and that's when you learn Zelda's lullaby. Um, then a little bit later on, I think Shane said, you know, he goes, oh, well, you get Saria's song at the Forest Temple. He's he's right and, and not quite. So um, you actually do get Saria's song second after Zelda's lullaby, but you have to go back to the Forest Temple after, <laughs> when you, so you go meet the Gorons, uh, Darunia needs a song to dance to. You find that song by going back to the Lost Woods, going to Saria, who's over by the Forest Temple, just in front of it. You don't even go into the Forest Temple yet. That's where she teaches you Saria's song. You go over to the Gorons, you do all your stuff. Then, uh, you know, more things happen, and, and then um, Dan was absolutely right. Just before you become an adult, uh, Zelda throws the Ocarina of Time, the actual Ocarina of Time, into the moat. You go get down and get it. You become Adult Link. Basically, the first thing you do is go back to the Forest Temple, where you then learn from Saria, yet again, the Forest Temple song. I don't even remember what it's called, but it's the one that lets you warp to Forest Temple. So there's three times where Saria actually does Ocarina stuff. Two times she teaches you. There's two different Ocarinas. It's fascinating to me how these memories can get tossed around and turned around a little bit so anyways uh, that was a lot of fun for me i'm sorry if it gave any extra stress to our participants here but this is the current standing mallory and ryan are at uh, eight dan is now in last place with that song of storms answer dan i'm I, i'm so disappointed in you um five six seven dan's at seven right now celeste is in the lead with 10 points right now. 10 points. Shane is tied up with Mallory and Ryan with 8 points. So we have 7, 8, and 10. Here we go. The next question. I tell you, they're getting harder. Question number 11. In what town does Link find the man named Error, capital E, in what town does Link find the man named Error in the adventure of Link? Is it A, Rudo, B, Kakariko, C, Mido, or D, Saria. Let's see what they have to say. In what town does Link find the man named Error in a, The Adventure of Link? Terrible question, because this was my first Zelda game when I was five, and I just have not gone back to play it because I had such a bad experience playing it. So uh, let's see here. Was it Rudo? Kakriko, Mido, or Saria. Since since Kakariko Village is in pretty much every Zelda game, I'm gonna go with that um, because two of those are names of characters, Macarena of Time, and one I think is from a different game. Some other character, one of the ah, Mido. I forgot, I forgot 
leaf character or I'm just gonna go Kakariko. Alright. Question number twelve. In what town does Link find the man named Error in the adventure of Link? Okay. Uh Village 404. Uh they're not found. Um, here we go. It is is it Rudo, Kakario, Mito, or and these I mean, throw a dart. I have no idea. Um, but if you break down Ruto, it starts with an R U. So, like, are you sure this is the right answer? And I'm not, so I don't think it's that one. Mido is M I do. M I do think this might be the right one, possibly. Um, Kakur, I don't know how to pronounce that one correctly, so I'm not going to embarrass. I mean, you know what? Am I do? I am I do think that's the town. So, am I do going to answer that one? Mido. Uh, in what town does Link find the man named Error in the Adventure of Link? Oh, there's another good one for us. Super fun! Team Coon hasn't played like half the games. Um, okay, so the Adventure of Link. Yes. Well, let's see. We can, well, I'm going to guess it's Kakariko because our four options are Ruto, which is a person in one yep. of the games, Kakariko, which is always a town, mm-hmm. Mido, which Mido. is a person. Is it Mido? It's Mido. Because I always said it Mido. Oh, it might be, oh Mido. It is the Mido from uh, Ocarina of Time. That's yeah, the, other, the guy, the mean, other kid. grumpy kid that uh, blocks yells away. at you. Yeah. And then Saria, who is a person. So, so I'm yeah, going to say it's Kakariko. Kakariko. Sounds simple enough. Seems like it's a trap. Yeah, right. It's Mido Town. <laughs> Let's see. <clears throat> okay. In what town does Link find the man named Error in the adventure of Link? Ruto, Kakariko, Mido, Saria. Now, I have not played the adventure of Link, but I have seen the famous screenshot of I am Error. Ooh, it's in a house. <laughs> house could be anywhere. It could be in another dimension. I have no idea. I think it's Ruto. I think it's I think it's Ruto. Okay, wow, Celeste is killing it right now. I think she's gotten every single answer correct. She's at eleven points. Uh, everybody else did get it wrong. Um, Kekariko is a is a village in almost every single Zelda game, and that's that's I think that's why it's in there. It's a bit of a, I don't know if it's a red herring or, or what, but it's a bit of a distraction. So the way the story goes is all of the care. So I love that, like um, Mallory, for example, was saying, well, Rudo's a person, Mido's a person, Sari is a person. And some of the other people were saying that as well. So um, a fun fact about the Ocarina of Time is that all of the characters in Ocarina of Time, many of the characters in Ocarina of Time are named after towns from the Adventures of Link, from the Adventure of Link. So Rudo is a town in Adventure of Link. Mido is a town in Adventure of Link. Saria is a town in Adventure of Link. And Ruto, it's the very first town you go to. I mean, technically, I think you can kind of go to two towns, but it's the one closest. If you have a chance to, even if you have like Switch Online and you have a chance to play, or you have a, 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 a NES Mini, a NES Mini or anything like that, give the game a try. It's very difficult. We're definitely going to be doing a review on it at some point, probably next season, to be honest. But uh, one of the first towns you go to is the town of Rudo, and as you walk through a couple screens, you go into a house, and there's a man that simply says, I am Error. <laughs> and um, the story goes that the database, you know, the, the coordinates in the data array to find this character's name isn't there, so it comes in as Error. Uh, there's a lot of kind of um, urban legends as to why that says Error, but that's the case in the town of Rudo. Rudo is where Error lives. Isn't that crazy? I was I wasn't you know I I was very pleased about that one. Here's another one. I mean these questions like they, like I said they start getting pretty fun here. They start getting tricky. Um, let's see. Okay, uh, question twelve. What is the maximum number of rupees Link can hold in the first game for the Nintendo Entertainment System? What is the maximum number of rupees Link can hold in the first Zelda game for the Nintendo Entertainment System? Is it a nine hundred ninety nine? B, 500, C, 255, or D, 100? 
Here we go. We're gonna start with Dan. A lot of good reasoning with these answers on this one. What is the maximum number of rupees Link can hold in the first Zelda game for NES? Well, why wouldn't it be 999? I feel like that's it's gotta be the right answer, right? Who would be some who would choose something so specific as 255? How many rupees are even in the game? Maybe that's a thing. Um, you know what? I'm gonna go 500. You know, I'm a, I'm a middle of the road kind of guy. So I think 500 is going to be the right answer. Yeah, let's do 500. I think 500 rupees is the most rupees anyone would really ever need. And, you know, anything after that, you're just hoarding. And that's just not proper. So I'm going to go 500 rupees. There we go. What is the maximum number of rupees Link can hold in the first Zelda game for NES? Oh my gosh, I've only played a little bit of that one. My first one was A Link to the Past. Um, <laughs> and it was kind of hard to go back to, I guess, the older games after we reached that top tier. I'm going to go with, let's see, let's read the options. 999, 500, 255, 100. Now, you need special wallets in later Zelda games to hold up to 999. I think the most you can hold at first is like 500 until you get the adult wallet from the House of Skultua, if memory serves me. I'm going to go with 500. I feel like they were going to low ball you back then. So, what is the maximum number of rupees Link can hold in the first Zelda game for Ness? Uh, I just beat this for the first time last, I want to say November. So... Ah, oh, I'm going to say, I don't think I've ever had the full wallet just because I kept buying things. Um, I'm going to say 999. It's a good odd number. <coughs> okay. <laughs> okay, what is the maximum number of rupees that Link can hold in the first Zelda game for NES? So, I never had an NES. My first ever gaming console was the GameCube. Uh, <laughs> and uh, my first Zelda game was Link to the Past, so... <laughs> Aren't you guys so glad to listen to us answer these questions? They maybe make you guys feel better about your own Zelda knowledge, maybe. Cheers. <laughs> <laughs> I'm going to say, just keep it simple and do say, 999. Oh, I was going to say 100. But okay, yeah, we'll say 999. Yeah, because 255 seems... is definitely... Not a random. Great yeah, random yeah. number. I'm going to say 999 because that's usually a, is a max number on your way. So. Yeah, because well, then they'd have to add another yeah. like character. And, yeah, exactly. So that's <laughs> why, that's why I think 100 and 500 don't make sense because you can still actually already, add. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, so it's definitely right. 999. So I actually love Ryan's logic there. He was saying if you're going to have three digits up on the screen, 999, like, you know, if you think about like the old dials on the dials on like old pinball machines, of course, you can go to 999. Why would you bother with 500 or 100 or 255? Um, I also like that people were thinking, OK, 500 seems about right, because there are times in Zelda games where you can get 500 rupees in your wallet. Nobody picked 100 um, because I think everybody expected you can probably get more than 100. But the right answer is 255. The weirdest one, the one that everybody thought was the strange answer um, was 255. And the reason is, this is just an absolutely fascinating story. They, uh, you know, the original, The Legend of Zelda, didn't have much space. The whole thing is only like a couple megabytes, honestly, the entire game. In fact, a screenshot of someone playing um, the original The Legend of Zelda takes up more memory than an act than the actual Zelda game. It's it's fascinating how that's true. So um, there wasn't a lot of places to there wasn't a lot of storage you could say to save some of these this data. And the simple fact is is that one byte was used to save how many rupees you had. One byte. Now there's eight bits that make up a byte, and each of these bytes or each of these bits can hold a certain amount of data. Each byte, each bit can hold like 16, I don't know, but when you add them all together, you can have integers from zero to 255, be, and that can be stored within those eight bits, which equals one byte, and that's what was used 
on in the in the RAM to remember how many rupees a character had. This is also why when you're doing um, color values in graphic design, your RGB values go up to 255 and down to zero because a pixel will have an R value, a G value, a B value, a red, green, a blue, and then usually also an alpha value, which is black. So 255, I. I, I, I've never even experienced this myself. I found this information and I researched, I had to research it because I almost didn't believe it. It's absolutely true. 255 rupees in the original The Legend of Zelda because that's the amount, that's the highest you can count on one byte of data. One byte, that's one pixel. That's one pixel on a picture. Oh my gosh. So 255, everyone got that one wrong. So here's the standing. We have one question left. It's a bonus question. This question is ridiculously hard. Um, and it's worth two points. So as it stands, I'm going to read out of order here. It looks like we have Dan in last place at seven. Uh, Shane and Mallory and Ryan are actually tied here at eight. And Celeste, it looks like Celeste has 11 correct right now. Everyone got that last one incorrect. But uh, let's see if anybody can pull forward by getting two points on the next question. The next question, the bonus question, two points. The original, The Legend of Zelda for NES, in the original Zelda for NES, where is level six located during the second quest? Is it A, in the graveyard when you play the recorder? Is it B, in the middle of a lake you reach by raft? Raft? Is it C, under an empty fairy's fountain when you play the recorder? Or is it D, in the desert, behind a wall that you must bomb? Now, you know, this question, I, full disclosure, I have not experienced level six in the second quest. That's why I have this as a bonus question. I don't know if many people get to that second quest level six. Um, I know that sometimes the recorder is also called the whistle or the flute in that game. I think, I think in the original instruction manual, it might be called the flute. But nevertheless, recorder is what's on here for A and recorder is what's on here for C. I just wanted to be clear about that. Let's see what our contestants had to say about level six. I'm loading up their audio right now. We're gonna start with Celeste. Bonus question, two points. In the original Zelda for NES, where is level six located during the second quest? Oh, that's true. There's a second, a second quest. Yeah. In the graveyard when you play the recorder, in the middle of a lake you reach by raft, under an empty fairy's fountain when you play the recorder, in the desert behind a wall you must bomb. I have no idea. Because <laughs> I've never played it. Oh. I didn't even know you could get a recorder in that game unless, unless David's messing with me. I'm gonna go with the raft. I mean, remember there's some water bodies in that game. Okay, bonus question bonus for two question. points. Thanks, two points. In the original Zelda for Ness, where is level six located during the second quest? I didn't play it again. I was happy I beat it the first time. Um, let's see here. In the graveyard, when you play the recorder, in the middle of a lake, you reach by raft, under the empty fairy's fountain, when you play the recorder, or in the desert behind a wall, you must bomb. Okay, so... I'm going to say... I want to say in the middle of a lake, you reach by raft. I... Yeah, I'm going with that one. We'll see what happens. All right, last question. It's bonus question. Bonus question. question. Two points. We need them. We need okay. the extra credit points. All right. Go ahead. Original... <laughs> Great. The original Zelda. <laughs> no. In the original Zelda for NES, where is level six located during the second quest? David... <laughs> Why you gotta do this to us? <laughs> um, options are in the graveyard when you play the recorder, which I didn't know you get a recorder. In the middle of the lake, you reach by raft, which lake? Under an empty fairy's fountain when, when you, you play, play the, the recorder. The so the recorder must be a thing. In the desert behind a wall, you must bomb. 
I'm going to say the desert behind a wall. You must bomb. I think the recorder is a red herring. I don't think there's a recorder. <laughs> that is I mean, that's that's a very guess. obvious Zelda thing to do and probably is. <sighs> Let's see. I don't think it's under the fairy fountain. I don't think you get it by a raft because I, I, that, that old of a game, I don't know if they had rafts. Well, I mean, just the, the bit of it that's to get you across. <laughs> Rafts well, it's like, like if you think about, like, I'm thinking Ocarina, oh, not Ocarina Time, Link to the Past is an older game as well, and you did not have rafts in any way, shape, or form. Like, you couldn't cross yeah. water. Okay. Um. Yeah, I'm going to say, in the desert, behind a wall, you must bomb. I'm going to agree. All right. Bonus question. Uh, for two points, in the original Zelda for NES, where is the level six, or where is level six located? <laughs> what? Where is the level six located during the second quest? Oh, these are. Oh, this is easy. Of course, it's um in the desert behind a wall. You must bomb. It's got to Yeah, anything. I'm gonna go in the desert behind a wall. You must bomb. Because at least that's hidden. No, oh, but in the middle of a lake, you're reached by a raft. Possibly that one. Are there rafts in the original Zelda? In the graveyard when you play the recorder? No, it doesn't sound right. It's definitely not in the graveyard when you play the recorder. I'm going in the desert behind a wall. You must bomb. All right, guys. So those are all my answers. Um, of course, I probably got 15 out of 15. I really felt strong about all these. Um, but yeah. These were fun questions. And we will see you all on the flip side. Oh, Dan, you were so close. You were so close. Everyone got that one wrong. No extra bonus points. Um, again, I have not experienced this myself. I can't take any credit for knowing this. This was, this was. I learned this from the internet. Um, it is allegedly in the graveyard when you play the recorder. So close, Dan. Uh, a lot of rafts, a lot of rafts. And then uh, there, there is technically a raft in The Legend of Zelda, the first game, but it's very rudimentary. You you get a ladder that lets you cross water. And then a little bit later, I think it's for level four in the first quest, you um, get on a raft and push up and then you just kind of, per- you go in one direction. You can't even steer the raft. It just brings you in one direction and then you find this little island. Uh, anyway, so, okay, wow, there it is. So it definitely ramped up by the end. Um... I am going to the the later in the video we have reactions the the team members here were able to see their results and so I'm going to put uncut versions of all these videos on our Patreon page I believe um, maybe I'll have it be part of like the white sword tier or something like that but here we go no extra points there at the end so as it stands Mallory and Ryan ended up with eight points Dan ended up with seven you almost almost beat Mallory and Shane Dan if you would have would have selected that recorder with the graveyard uh Celeste with 11 points and Shane again still tied with Mallory and Ryan at eight so it's seven eight and Celeste came out on top with 11 points congratulations Celeste that's wonderful I didn't again like I said I did not keep track of who was getting what right and wrong when I edited the uh responses and that's really exciting so there it is Everyone, I hope you enjoyed our first Zelda quiz. Maybe we'll do this more often. I, I think even in a non-shelter-in-place environment, I think this could be a lot of fun to do. Maybe we could do, oh my gosh, maybe we could do a live version of this somehow next season or something like that. I think that would be an absolute blast. So I really want to thank Mallory and Ryan and Shane and Celeste and Dan for uh, participating. And even Carlos, for you know he also writes blogs for us. All of these folks have been very very meaningful this season and I've really appreciated their involvement. So I hope you guys also enjoyed this quiz and there it is. I think we'll head out. Um, You can also, you can always, you know, um, if you have any thoughts about how we could do some quizzes in the future, or if there's a way that maybe we could do like a listener version of a quiz, I could build a Google form for other people to do and we could see who gets on top. You know, that could be a fun way to do this too. But anyway, uh, for now, if you'd like to find another Zelda podcast on Twitter, you can find us on another Zelda. You can find us at another Zelda pod. We're on Instagram at another Zelda podcast. And of course you can find our website, another Zelda podcast.com. Com. You can go to web. Go. You can find us on Google or Apple Podcasts and Google Podcasts, as well as Facebook and YouTube by simply searching "Another Zelda Podcast." 
And that is it. You're welcome to find me uh, on Twitter and Instagram at Raptor Paint. Um, I'm going to put all of the links to people's Twitter pages and whatnot in our show notes at our website at anotherzeldapodcast.com. All right, everybody. Thank you so much. Thank you for that listener feedback. We'll see you in the next episode. And this was a blast. This was a real blast for me to put together. Okay. I guess I got to do it. I don't know if I've ever done it before. I've always been with someone else. All right, guys. I'll see you next week. Okay, bye. Bye.